Watch out! Apollo Justice Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system due to it featuring mild blood, suggestive themes, and violent references? Whatever those are. Oh well. Viewer discretion is advised for this Let's Play series. Hey there, Roddy! I'm Marty. Welcome back to Apollo Justice Ace Attorney, everybody. We're continuing with Case 4, Turnabout Succession. We'll probably be- we're gonna finish up the investigation period. This recording session, it might get split up into two videos. I was about to say, so you say. I'm very skeptical that we're going to be we done with this. We spent an hour on the first two Yeah, videos. but investigation could be like three hours. Yeah. Like I've said, this is a relatively short... This has short steps in the case. The case itself is a good length. Oh yeah, we're but... going to the Sunshine Coliseum. Oh, we can go here from Drew Studio. Yeah, let's see Valent Grammary. October 7th, Sunshine Coliseum. The banner's changed. It's not the Gavineers anymore now. It's the Grammarie uh, That would be weird if it was the Gavineers. <laughs> We're holding another concert here. Achtun. <laughs> Woohoo! This is it, Apollo. The place where magic and dreams converge. Just a while ago, it was the place where murder and nightmares converged. Let's go say hi to Uncle Valen. What about the case? Whoa! <laughs> Only a performer laughs like that. The young Miss Trucy! How often I'd hoped we'd meet again, only to tell myself it was an impossible dream. <laughs> Uncle Valent, how's it going? I'm glad to see you too. Of course you are! Humility is definitely not one of his stronger suit <laughs> traits. Well, Miss Trucy, how does the day find you? If you've come to give me flowers, do it after the show, I beg you. Actually, we came to wish you good luck. And congratulations on your big magic show! Oh, but it is I who wish to congratulate you. Not everyone is so lucky as to witness miracles such as I shall perform. Yeah, yeah, you're amazing. We get the picture. <laughs> the world will watch in wonderment as Magnifi's illusions are reborn. Here on stage, by my hand. I love the music here. Music is good. Everyone's talking about the big magic show. Is it true that the Grammarine Miracle is back after a seven-year absence? Miss Trucy, I must apologize. This show and this honor should have been his. Daddy. My co-magician in training, Zach Grammary. If that terrible thing hadn't... It's okay. Your father was a great magician, Trucy. If he were alive, then I, Valent Grammary, would have been proud to stand upon this stage as his assistant. Valent. You know, I'm happy you're doing this show. To think we get to see the great magnif Magnifies... Magnifi. Magnifi? Magnifi. To think we get to see the great Magnifies illusions again. She really is looking forward to this, isn't she? Oh yeah, also, subtle thing, um, Trucy's got like the diamond brooch mm -hmm. and Valent, I believe, has the heart brooch. Oh, I think she probably got it from her dad then. And I think like her dad had, like, a cl uh, club brooch, so oh. it's, like, the different card suits, which is kind of cool. That's funny. My mentor, the magnificent Magnifi Grammary, was a true deity among magicians. A creator god who gave birth to magic and illusions that defied our very imaginations. I was so little when I last saw one, but I still remember his shows. He did wheelies in a sports car through the air and above the audience, and then sped off to outer space faster than the speed of sound. I'm guessing that memory was a bit embellished. <laughs> for seven long years, the world has been waiting for a miracle to match his. As heir to the Grammarie Troop secrets, it falls to me to provide one. It is my god-given destiny. How old is this dude? He's, he's like, in his forties. He's like ripped. <laughs> um... Yes, you nameless face who speaks for the nameless masses, how can I help you? If the world was waiting, why did you hold off for seven long years? Hmm... It appears the lad is uninformed. Perhaps you have heard of the magic known as law in which governs our land. I have, though I'm not sure it qualifies as magic. The performance of Magnifi's miracle was impossible. A certain law prevented it for seven years, but no more. Seven years? That phrase sure likes to pop up, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> the Ace Attorney games are very fond of seven years. <laughs> and why was that? A little matter called performance rights, Miss Trucy. Performance rights is a thing. Yep. Can you tell us about these performance rights? Magnifi's magic relied on an incredibly innovative idea. A trick, if you will. That trick was considered his property and as such was protected by property laws. Intellectual property, maybe? 
Magnify knew this and bequeathed it in his will. To one person. You mean... him? Yes. Miss Trucy, it was your father. Zack Grammary was the inheritor of the Grammary Miracle. Daddy. Yet, as you well know, he is gone. He disappeared suddenly seven years ago. I think I see where this story is going. Once a person is classified missing for a certain period of time, they're considered legally deceased, correct? In all absoluteness, those rolled up sleeves conceal your competence well, young man. That certain period of time of which you speak is seven years. Apparently after Misty Face 20 years, it's like, no, let's lower it to seven. Yeah, I think they were they were like, <laughs> okay, this is a bit ridiculous. <laughs> Tw 20 years ago, although, I wanted although wasn't to- Although, wasn't she working with the government? That's true. So it might have well, been Well, no, like, the government had tabs on her. Okay, then in other words, they might just be like, okay, we're gonna call her kind of deceased, but like, she's still alive. Or maybe it's maybe it was Korean village tradition that after 20 years, like, they're gone for good. That's and then, what it is. Okay. Alright, yeah, maybe. Ah! Uh. Yes, Miss Trucy, though it pains me to say it, this past spring, April to be precise, was the time. Your father was legally declared deceased. In the absence of a formal will, the secrets of our mighty mentor Magnify passed to me. This was, in fact, stipulated in the will by Magnify himself. Is... Is that how it works, Apollo? Yeah, it's called death in absentia. He's declared missing permanently. Daddy. Poor Trucy. I mean, let's be fair. There's a lot of missing parents in yeah, this series. Yeah, it's true. Poor every Disney character. <laughs> and not just every Disney character, like every spirit channeler. That's also true. Like, everyone has their parents dead or deceased or declared deceased in this. <laughs> They've changed the sign since our last case. It was all the Gavineers back then, wasn't it? I hope nothing bizarre and mysterious happens this time. But it shall! Why, the show itself will be bizarre and mysterious, I assure you. I don't have a problem with mystery as long as it's legal. <laughs> I don't think lawyers and magicians were really meant to have conversations like this. Yeah, it's kind of true. Wee, no clues, aw. What about the balloon? My balloon! Look, Apollo! A balloon! A hot air balloon! With the Grammary seal on it, no less. Well, this is a long-awaited revival, after all, and it's been seven years, you know. I've spent plenty of time and a pretty penny on promotion. I hope it's a huge success, Uncle Valen. Oh, I intend for it to be nothing less, I assure you. They both sure seem excited about it. I guess it's a big deal for magicians. I mean, it's... It would be- I feel like this would be the equivalent of, like, Wicked. It went off Broadway for, like, seven years, and now it's back! <laughs> did it? I, I don't know if it did. No, I'm just saying didn't. it would be, like, the equivalent. I was like, yeah. If it, that happened. Yeah, it and did not people, happen. And people would be I'm freaking sure, out that Wicked's going back I'm on Broadway. I'm pretty sure it's, like, still... One it, of the I don't tops. think I don't think it actually ever left Broadway. Pretty sh stinking yeah. sure. Yeah. I think it's been going on since like. Or, or I guess now for the nowadays audience, if Hamilton left, <laughs> I don't even oh, know no. if in like two years when this gets uploaded, Hamilton will still be a big thing or not. But I mean, it still is though after four years. I spent him for four years. I don't see the appeal of Hamilton I, at all. I, I hate only rap. see. Okay, but here's the thing. I hate rap too. It's clever rap, and it's all right. Interesting beaded rap. I, I also guess? don't. I also. I guarantee someone's gonna be like, oh, Artie, you're so, you're such a terrible person for saying this, but, like, I, I don't really like how it's like, oh, yeah, like, oh, uh, like, was it, like, is it, like, Alexander, I uh, know, not Hamilton, he's the man, like, they're, like, it's like, oh, yeah, some of the founding fathers are black, or, like, uh, Asian, or, like, oh, you don't like how it's, uh, um, I don't, I don't, like, colorblind cast, I don't mind colorblind casts, but I, I kind of do for this, because it's supposed to be a historical event, right, they're doing that a lot more now for Broadway shows, which right. I don't mind personally because I think like, it's for hard. example, Little Mermaid, colorblind, that's fine. Yeah, like colorblind, fine. Yeah, they also did that for like Rogers and Hammerstein, Cinderella, and that worked yeah. totally well for the '90s. Especially. It's a fairy tale, so it's a fairy it, tale. it works. Yeah, but yeah, I do think that like when you have an original Broadway cast and it's supposed to be something based off of mostly real facts. I say this because I don't know the whole musical. I know most um, of my Revolutionary War history from uh, Liberty's, Liberty's Kids. Kids. Amazing TV Here's show, one thing. of the best. Yeah, if Benedict Arnold isn't um, <laughs> Dustin, uh, Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman, then what are I'm you out. doing with your life? <laughs> hey, that creature there. He was handing out balloons during our last case, too. He's not a creature, Apollo. Poor guy. Oh, sorry. 
Was I mean somehow? You know how hot it is inside one of those suits? He's stuck in there with only the smell of his own sweat to keep him company. On the verge of passing out, he hands out each balloon as though it was his last! Kind of takes the fun out of seeing the blue badger. That's kind of true, though. Yeah. I, I feel, feel so bad. bad when I see, like, the, like, weird cow in the costume. Like, or eat just, at this steakhouse, which I have a lot of problems with. <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot that guy was in our town. <laughs> forgot about that. Might have just... to cut that out later. It's just in case people are like, oh, I know what restaurant you're talking about. Other, he lives I'm in that town. I'm sure other towns have random cows advertising dumb things. Or, like, a different animal. Like Maybe I'll cut part of it out. I don't know. You know, I thought this at the time of the Gavin Ears concert, too, but this Coliseum is just way too big. It's huge. It's got a big-sounding name, too. Sunshine Coliseum, was it? <laughs> Would you like to hear what the grand finale of the show in three days will be? <gasps> what? Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the grand finale will be nothing other than... Don't tell me. You're going to make the Coliseum disappear, right? Ah! Uh -huh. Oh. Oops, looks like I was right. Apollo! I can't believe you used your power of perception on something like this! It was just a wild guess, really! Well, I guess that'll be interesting. Fallon Grammary, I'm an attorney. <laughs> a challenge, is it? You want me to make that disappear? Very well, give it to me. Ah, no thanks! Are all magicians like this? Apollo, what was that look just now? I was just thinking how hard it is to get any information out of a magician. We got your tickets. Ha ha ha, of course you did. I'm amazing. Uh, I don't think we can show anything. Um, oh. uh, I was wondering if you could tell me about this. Ha ha ha, why that bears the grammary seal. Hmm. Uncle Valet, is something wrong? Trucy, where did you get this? Don't kill us! Uh, uh, Daddy gave it to me. Your... You're the daddy? My partner, no, Zach no, Ravery? No, 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 My other daddy, Phoenix Wright. Why now? Why would your Lord Daddy... Lord Daddy? <laughs> That's kind of stretching the whole archaic thing a bit. I love his, like, ugh, pose, though. He looks utterly disgusted. This signature on the back, do you recognize it? That belongs to none other than Zach Grammary. What? Daddy signed this? Might I be so bold as to open it? Uh, I'm sorry, but I can't let you do that. Mm, uh, uh, what's in this envelope, I wonder? Hey, I know what we should do. <laughs> what? We should take it to Emma and be like, Emma. I want to know what's inside. I want to know what's inside. <laughs> hey, you want poison coffee? <laughs> no. <laughs> I see. Let me be perfectly clear. No. no. <laughs> Brushel's card. As weird as that case was, I did really like him. I, I liked him a lot better that I got to voice act him, but still, not a great case. Spark Brushel, freelance journalist. Oh, he's freelance. Great. I guess you gotta have a good business card if you want to work freelance. That is the Aperture Science logo. What? That's the, the lo Aperture Science. That is the logo? logo of the like facility that you play Portal in. Oh, <laughs> I, now I know what that's, you mean. That circle with yeah, all that the... Circle. Yeah, that circle. I haven't played Portal in so long. Have you played Portal at all? I played, like, two levels of it. Not levels, like two... Portal 1 or 2? 1. Oh, really? I think. Well, 1 Portal, I only have wait, on Steam. Portal 1... Portal 2 it, is the one Link has on the PS3. Right. It opens, and it, the one that I played, it opened, and you, like, got up, you checked a calendar, you went to bed, and then you woke up That's like 900 two. years That's later. That's Portal 2. Oh, okay, I played Portal 2. Cool. Yeah. Did uh, you already say that? That's you. Oh, shoot. Really? What's this? A camera lens finder? It had Trucy's face next That's to it. That's true. So. Do reporters take photos too? I guess if he's freelance, he'd have to. Maybe you should try being a prosecutor and a defense attorney. You'd always win. Why don't I become a rock star too while I'm at it? <laughs> So, a journalist was here on a story? All eyes in the universe are upon my stage. All pens seek to commit its mysteries to paper. Um, his name was Brushel. Brushel, 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 Brushel. I think he remembers him. He doesn't look too happy about it. 
brussel. That cloying smell of mint when he smiled. Yes. Oh boy. I'm picturing a guy who never opens his eyes. They're like always like, he, like the happy mask salesman. <laughs> That's what I'm picturing. Okay. Um, could you tell us a bit more about him? What did he want? He wanted to hear about <laughs> Colonel Mustard. <laughs> and Tuxedo Mask. A man by that name called on me just now. He was asking about all of the seasons of Sailor Moon and said I looked like one of the characters. Ridiculous. He doesn't <laughs> wear yellow. He doesn't. Just now? Valance vision is always toward tomorrow. Valance first feet step always forward. That is all. That's all? Very confusing. I am to perform a big magic show, yes? I wanted someone to cover it. Yet he had ears only for that incident. That incident? In any case, I requested that the rap the rapacious remover reporter remove himself. So a painter has died, what of it? It is but a footnote in the footlights compared to the magic of grammarie. Uncle Valent, do you know where the reporter went? I recommended he visit the place popular with penalized perpetrators. The detention center? He was a rude individual. Might I see that card? He just rips it. Uh, sure. He would tear <laughs> apart my respectability. I shall tear him <laughs> apart. Ooh, here comes Apollo, Uncle Valen's big magic trick. Is he going to fix the card? Not sure that qualifies as big magic. He just is going to leave it. What happened to the big magic? <laughs> is it not more miraculous for it to stay ripped? He must have really not liked that journalist. <laughs> now the time has come when I must return to make my press indignation preparations. By your leave, Miss Trucy. Thanks, Uncle Valen. Three days from now, make ready for a miracle. Okay. What do you think that journalist was after? And why did Valen react like that to this envelope? I think it's time to pay the detention center another visit. I think it's extra time we... Go visit Emma. No! Nobody cares about you, Phoenix Wright. Also, weren't you supposed to have left by now? Maybe. He's like, I have an important secret mission. <laughs> <laughs> it's the tourist system, remember? Yeah, but I thought he was going to leave and do more stuff with that. No, nah, he's just going to sit on his butt watching uh, How samurai I Met Your Mother. Steel Samurai. Oh, and that. Yeah. <laughs> October 7th, Detention Center Visitor's Room. I think I hear what you're saying. We're all doing it for the money. End quote. No, 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 not at all. Looks like someone's already meeting here. Maybe that reporter? Oh my gosh. Hey there, how you doing? Who might you be? Um, uh, uh, sorry, we didn't know someone was already here and someone is off model as this. <laughs> oh my gosh. He looks like a cross between a baby and that guy from Toy Story 2 that fixes Woody. <laughs> Gary. Gary? From Gary's Without game. a mustache. And a completely Why? different shaped face. Why is his chin... He doesn't look like Gary at all! Why is his chin white? It's called Five O'Clock Shadow. Five O'Clock Shadow makes your face darker, not lighter. Doesn't it's it? It's a different shade. Maybe he puts on clown makeup. I don't know. Ugh. Uh, sorry, we didn't know someone was already here. Uh, I'm Apollo Justice, attorney at law. Talk about a nervous monkey. You, your justice, you... You know me? Do I know you? Of course I know you. Stares down witnesses on stand till they spill beans. End quote. Th that's not true! What's he writing? <laughs> Are you a reporter by any chance? Whoa, you! You're Trucy. Uh, am I famous? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Trucy Wright hates carrying a bag. Puts everything she owns in her panties. End quote. Yay! That's so not true! Just hold on to your breeches there. I'll wrap up this interview in a jiffy. Interview? So, guard, uh, I think I know what's going on here. Guarding rooms is my life. What else can I possibly need? End quote. No! How many times do I have to tell you this? <laughs> Look, I got work to do. You this deal with the, him. This is the male version of Rita Skeeter. Yep, <laughs> except he actually manually writes it down, doesn't make the quill do it. <laughs> um, did you come here to interview the guard? Wooey, what a pickle. Accused wouldn't talk, had to interview someone or go plum crazy, end quote. Huh. Poor Vera. I should have guessed. Where's my manners? Name's Brushel, Spark Brushel. I'm not picky. Journalist just closes his eyes right, end quote. Should he have a list? I think it fits, kind of. Yeah. 
What's that nauseatingly strong mint smell every time he grins? Ugh. <laughs> Until you've been interviewed by me, you don't know what brewing is. Wild romp through crossroads of mayhem. Madness. End quote. I can see that. He's writing something again. He's what? like Mulan when she writes, like, on the honor hand. or whatever <laughs> sure. on her hand. Then it gets on the matchmaker's hand. Yeah. Because she's rude. <laughs> well, if he's a reporter, maybe he knows something. Who wants to talk to this weirdo? Yeah, this guy. Also, this guy's a definitely a fan. Also, he's a and in his pocket. Like, forget a pocket protector. You just need your own pocket. <laughs> also, he has the same theme music as Durek Duhadi. Yeah, that makes sense, because he moves so much. He looks like he's about to floss every two seconds. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Breschel, you're a journalist? Ah, me? Look, let me state one thing for the record here. Y yeah? I'm the interviewer, you understand, yeah. I'm the one asking the questions here, end quote. Okay... For instance, you think a movie director watches movies? Well, I think he probably does. Exactly! I knew you'd understand. Huh? This guy is very strange. I don't like him. Oh, also, next time he blinks, look at how he blinks. It's very strange. Okay, so the night of the murder, you were at your studio? Who, me? Look, let me state one thing for the record. Oh, he only his blinks His lower lids lid. move up, which, like, can't happen. Yeah, it can. All the way up? Nope. <laughs> also, you look very evil when you do that. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to see that. Let me state one thing for the record. Yeah? I may look calm and collected, but I'm busy. Real busy. Always on the road. Journalist always buys one-way tickets. Never looks back. End quote. I can understand that philosophy, but... You want to know the thing about one-way tickets? Once you use them, they're gone. All because you have to give them to the guy at the airport. True enough. But don't they give normal tickets away, too? Exactly! See? It's the same thing. What is? <sighs> yeah, a lot of people don't like this guy. I don't. He's very, very weird. He's like... He, he grew on me a bit, though. Okay. If he was a doctor, he would freak me out. He, well, he's not a doctor, so thank goodness. So, you went to do a story on Drew Misham, and he'd never had a story done about him before. That's right. Look, let me state one thing for the record here. What? I'm sure you're going to know, want to know about my thoughts. What tipped me off to Drew? Why do the interview in the first place? Well, yeah. Look, it's like... Oh, I've got it. Uh, say there's this burger joint with fabulous ketchup. You think the burger guy's gonna tell me where he got it? At the supermarket, maybe? Exactly! See? That's what I'm talking about. I think I may have actually understood that one. Well, there's nothing I can talk about, really. Walls have ears, eyes, especially glass walls with speakers, end quote. Right. Guess we'll leave, then. Ah, but since you're here, I might as well tell you a tidbit of news I saw, just for the heck of it. Sure, tell us. Just for the heck of it. I remember it like it was yesterday. I'd seen a movie on a trip and wandered into the burger place with amazing ketchup. With, when an article in a tabloid caught my eye. Famous oil paintings stolen from an art dealer's gallery. End quote. I believe it was. An oil paint painting? Happens every day, right? But I thought I'd seen that painting somewhere before. A painting of a giant peach floating down a river. Someone stole an oil painting of a giant peach. Journalists can smell scoop better than burgers. End quote. Okay. That's nice. Goodbye. Oh, okay, Show me your fine. attorney's badge. Ah, right. Let me go on the record here. I yeah I know what you're going to say. Brushel, take this. Write brilliant column, end quote. I don't think so! Look, buddy, I write brilliant columns about one thing, and that's food. Try to understand. What could he possibly be writing? He didn't listen to a word I said! <laughs> yeah. So he only does food blogs, but also he interviewed Drew Mission. <gasps> I know what else he looks like. Okay, remember when you go... I mean, his face looks like a Q-tip. You know when... <laughs> <laughs> you know how when you go to Disney and they're like, Oh, we'll like draw your child for like 50 bucks. Oh, and it's a like, caricature. A caricature, but like the teeth look so yeah. unreal. That's what he looks like. His smile is very creepy. He also has like monkey ears. 
Hey, some people have large ears. <laughs> okay, but like, you're somebody who should actually have hair. Mm hmm. Ah, right. Let me go on the record here. Yeah? I'm not buying art, especially stolen art. I don't think he'll react to anything. Yeah? Oh, hang on. Spark Brushel, 36. Wow. I wish this was Lotta Heart. Wow, really? <laughs> you would have taken Lotta over this guy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Except, here's the thing. If it was Lotta, you'd be like, well, I know Lotta wasn't the killer. Unless she changed her ways. I want a case like that, where it's like, oh, Old Bag's back, but Old Bag actually is the murderer. That That'd could be actually funny. be pretty cool. Drew Studio. Well, how'd it go? Find anything out? Actually, there was one thing I wanted to check with you. What's with that scary face you're making? And what's with that I know something but I'm not telling you face of what you've got going, Emma? This painting came from behind that dresser. Ah, uh, yeah, so? It was stolen, no. I was hoping you wouldn't fi figure that out. Do you think you could tell us a bit about this? I suppose. It's what you think. Drew Misham was a forger. A forger?! So, what exactly is a forger? Oh, we're gonna get for this in one video. We're about to finish with the investigation, I think. Oh my gosh. Well, basically it's someone who makes forgeries. Fakes, in other words. Fakes? Copies of an original. Exact copies. So precise, you can't tell them apart. <laughs> well, why not just photocopy them? I love it. the voice you give Emma when she's eating. <laughs> Big problem with forgeries is that people try to sell them as real articles. <laughs> That's perfect for the eating voice. <laughs> they try to sell them as the real articles. Real articles. <laughs> That's how I eat, chew and eat, though. Yeah. It's a crime, of course. So, your mission was... A criminal? Afraid so. He received money to create elaborate forgeries. To supplement his work in illustration, I guess. I see. Actually, that's why I brought this here in the first place. What do you mean? When you're trying to determine if a painting is a forgery, the rough sketch underneath can be a valuable clue. So, the rough sketch is like a practice for the real thing. Like doing a magic trick in front of a mirror before you go on stage. Uh, but not in the case of a forgery. Not necessarily, anyway. You know what the finished product is going to look like, after all? Oh, yeah, I guess you would. That's why I brought this. I'm going to use it to see what's under the paint of this finished pieces. I get it now. Not that I really needed to go through such lengths. Seeing as how one of the paintings was only half finished anyway. Still, it'd be neat to see Mr. Misham's rough sketches. Kind of like when he was drawing when he thought nobody was looking. True. That would be interesting, and maybe valuable for our case. You should try buttering her up, Apollo. Flattery will get you everywhere, they say. Hmm, maybe I should ask Emma to help us out. To be honest, it makes so much sense that he's a forger because all of those art pieces look different. Yeah. Like, all of them, and I was and kind of wondering Generally, art that. Generally, artists have, like, their style, where it's like, Picasso did the really weird abstract stuff. Yeah. Dolly did the really surreal pieces. Claude Monet did impressionist paintings. Yeah. And, I mean, you can generally go away from that, but a lot of your paintings you will can. have the same kind of mood, at least. Maybe similar colors. Similar maybe style similar and technique. Style more. and technique. Like yeah. they evolve over time, but I guess there are exceptions. Like Michelangelo was mainly a sculptor, but he also did the Sistine Chapel ceiling. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what the Medici family was painting. Well, actually, wait, was it the Medici family or the Roman How Catholic the heck Church? Should I, know? That, I have no like, idea. I think it was the church that commissioned the Sistine Chapel. I d you would know more about history than me. I hate history. I hate history. I don't hate history. I'm bad at history. I hate history. Um, I kind of wanted to see the rough sketch under this painting. And I was wondering if your tool there might do the trick. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll stop. Fine, <laughs> fine. Just this time, though. Let's check it out. Start with the Mr. Potato Head Picasso piece. This is actually really fun to do on the DS, so it's a shame we can't do it on the DS. It's okay. This also probably looks terrible on the actual screen that people are watching, because it's just like, what's this little corner? 
They can't see the mouse cursor, but they can see the little brush that I'm moving around. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody, everybody wants, wants to be a cat. Ha ha, hallelujah, everybody. I finally have friends who really love that movie. Did you hate? You don't really like Aristocats. Aristocats is so Cats. boring. It's so cute. It's cute, but it's boring. It's not it has boring. one good part, which is everybody is wants like to be two, a cat. It has two great songs. One of them is how everybody wants to be a cat. What about Thomas Oma Ellie, the Alley Cat? Did I literally don't remember any songs from that movie okay, except for to, everybody you wants to. You need to rewatch that. Movie. I did, and I got so bored that I had to play Points vs. Zombies in the middle of it because wow. it was that boring. Okay. Let's, Let's print, print this, this out. out anyway. What? What the heck? Wow, he really blows. The finished painting isn't anything like the rough. Devices like mine didn't exist until recently. He probably thought he could draw any sort of thing he wanted from the rough. What do you mean? Well, in the past, you could only analyze the composition of a rough sketch. Composition? In other words, the traces of charcoal between paint and the canvas. So you could tell if there had been a rough sketch. But not what it looked like. Ah, I think I follow you. So in essence, it wouldn't matter what was underneath the finished painting. Some pro pro er, pl probs? <laughs> Some pros would actually paint out the rough sketch entirely. Then do a completely new painting on top of that. So, Mr. Misham was drawing whatever he wanted before painting over them. Possibly. Is there a problem with that? Not particularly, but something about the sketch itself is kind of odd. You're awfully silent all of a sudden, Apollo. You think we could check out the other paintings? Well, sure. You like this detective stuff, don't you? This is my favorite of the paintings. It's so pretty. I don't even like fish, but, like... You don't like fish? No. Look at the pretty fishy. Fish freaked me out a little bit. Uh, fish freaked me out when I was at, like, the doctor's office. Especially deep sea creatures. Holy cow, those... those like, if there was... If there were demons on Earth, like, in physical form, it would be deep sea creatures. Oh! <laughs> They're so creepy. See, for me, I don't have a fear of fish. I just have a fear of, like, water, which sounds really lame. But to me, it's any situation that I'm in where I have limited to no oxygen, like, freaks oh, yeah. me out. Like, the idea of scuba diving sounds terrifying. There we go. I'm like, where's the one pixel? Okay, let's print this out. It's a house. This one, too. What's wrong, Apollo? You look so serious all of a sudden. Um, you think I could just look at the last of these? Fine by me. Knock yourself out. Kung Fu fighting. <laughs> that was not what I was seeing. Oh. <laughs> uh. They're fast as lightning. Here comes the masked bear with his faithful steed. Ah. Uh, I really like Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh is fantastic. I think it's weird that he painted something completely different underneath. Or at least drew out something completely different underneath. Did I miss a step? Yeah, I missed a step somewhere. Okay. No. Come on. There? Nope. Oh, strange. I thought I got them all. Yeah. Come on. There we go. Is it a dude shooting somebody? Okay, let's print this out. Yes? What? What, what the heck is all this? I hesitate to ask why you're getting so excited. You sure your device isn't leaking some kind of strange radiation? Trucy, look at these free sketches. Do you notice anything? Uh, a dude playing poker. Oh, I didn't see the first one. A house and a guy shooting. Ah! There. Now you're both as white as sheets. What's going on? These sketches are of the free cases I worked on! What? The murder in the poker room at the Borscht Bowl Club? The dead man pulling the noodle oh, stand? Oh, I couldn't see the man. I just thought I it was couldn't a either. Yeah, I, I thought that was weird. And then... The events that transpired during the Gavin Ears concert! Oh, that's not a dude shooting somebody. That's a guy playing guitar. On fire. <laughs> what could it mean? How could he have painted those things? And why? That's what I want to know! Wait, is Drew Misham... 
your father? Give me a break! Does that even seem remotely possible to you? <laughs> I'd never even heard of any Drew mission before. I hadn't even seen a picture of him. But there were my cases drawn on his canvas. Every single one of them. You haven't had that many It cases. couldn't have been a coincidence. Just who was this Drew Misham? And what did he have to do with me? I swear, if it's somebody, like, important dead, like, it's like, oh, I've been watching your progress, and so now I'm dead, and <laughs> I was Edgeworth, or... Edgeworth I, did not age well. <laughs> Edgeworth. Uh, well, we didn't see a picture of him. Of Drew Misham? No. We did, too. What do we see of him? He was the Einstein guy. Oh, okay, but anyone, no offense, anyone could age like that and be like, eh, He has fine. Vera as a daughter, who is 17, no, 19. Could be adopted. Adoption's pretty common in these games. <laughs> Fair enough. Anyhow, that's know. it for this episode, everybody. Thanks for watching. We're going to court next time. Ooh. So have to see who the prosecutor is. I know. It'll probably be Gavin. Maybe, but every other la every other last case of the previous games had a different prosecutor. Maybe it'll be Phoenix Wright. <laughs> He's not an attorney anymore. But that would be hilarious if it's like, okay, I'm the chairman and I'm also the prosecution. <laughs> Conflict of interest. Anyhow, look forward to the trial. Until we meet again, <laughs> my friends. Stopped him before. <laughs> Have a great day and God bless.